Hello, Math 20-3, and welcome to Lesson 1, well, Chapter 1. We're going to start right at the beginning of the book here. So we're going to be doing something called Slope and Rate of Change. All right. So if we kind of move on down here. So in this first section, so 1.1, we are going to be talking about ratios, and we're going to be talking about proportions first. So ratio we've got on the side here, right? It's just a comparison between two numbers with the same units. Um, so what I mean by that is, let's say that you had a chainsaw or something. So quite often chainsaws, you need to mix um, the gas and oil, and it'll tell you uh, right on the chainsaw that you need a certain ratio. You need a certain amount of gas to a certain amount of oil. So let's say that your chainsaw needed 15 liters of gas for every one liter of oil. Well, the ratio, we would say is 15 to one. So that's one way of writing it that we could do is just 15 to one, and that's how you'd probably want to say it. And then the next thing you could do, or the way you can write it is 15 and then dot, dot, one. So that also says 15 to one, or 15 over one, that's also 15 to one. So just different ways of kind of saying the same thing. Okay, next, proportion. So when we talk about proportion, we are, talking about a statement of equality between two ratios. And what we mean by that is, like if you think about this example, it says, um, if an engine twice the size of the one, of the one uh, above needs the same mixture of gas and oil, it will need 30 liters, not 15 like before, right? 30 liters of oil for every two liters, or sorry, 30 liters of gas for every two liters of oil. So we can make these two ratios equivalent and by saying they're equivalent we're just saying we're making an equal sign in the middle so that's what a proportion is okay so let's just look at example one here I'll kind of walk you through it or help you through it here um, it just says there's a recipe for vegetarian chili and the way it has to be vegetarian um, but there's 56 ounces that's what OZ stands for ounces of chopped tomatoes 30 ounces of kidney beans and 15 ounces of whole kernel corn all right, so now it says, what is the ratio of corn to kidney beans? So all you really need to do is just grab how much corn there is, how much kidney beans there are, and put them beside each other. So corn, there was 15 ounces. So I'm going to start off by just saying 15. And then dot, dot. Um, and now look at kidney beans. That's 30. So 15 to 30. That's what that's saying. And now the solution in your booklet here, what it's kind of going, all it's saying is, the same thing I am here, but now we can write this in a smaller form, right? Maybe you've seen, this will make a bit more sense if you wrote it like 15 over 30, that would also be another way of writing it. Do you remember simplifying fractions? That's kind of what we have to do here. But, so all you have to do is look at the top, look at the bottom, and say, okay, what number goes into both? What can I divide 15 by, and what can I divide 30 by? Well, I can divide both of them by 15, right? 15 divided by 15 is 1. 30 divided by 15 is 2. So if I go 15 on top and go divided by 15, then on the bottom I go 30 divided by 15, what this would turn into is 1 over 2. 30 divided by 15 is 2. So this can also be written as 1 over 2, or it can be written as 1 dot dot 2. All right, moving on. So now B says the ratio of tomatoes to kidney beans. So that's kind of what they've done in part B down here. So let's look at that. And it, it says, okay, so tomatoes, there were 56. So 56 dot dot 30 um, of the kidney beans. And now what goes into both of these things? If you're unsure, one way to kind of that, that I know something that goes into them. It's two, right? They're both even numbers. So I know I can divide both of them by two at least. And if you don't, maybe there's something else that you're not thinking of, but just try two first. And then on the next one, maybe there's something else that goes into it. And you can kind of just keep working your way down like that. So for now, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to divide um, that by two and divide that by two. When I put a line over top of two, that's the same thing as saying divided by two, right? So let's go 56 divided by two. That's 28. 30 divided by two is 15. And now that I'm at this point, that's as low as I can go, right? There's nothing that I can divide 28 and 15 by. They, so that's, that's my answer. 
Okay, so on this one, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and try these three questions on your own. Okay, so now we're going to be dealing with proportions. So we're going to make some ratio equal to some other ratio. And I'll, I'll just kind of walk you through this first one to see what I'm talking about. So it says a big screen TV has an aspect ratio. So just off the bat here, aspect ratio, what that means is that um, this would be 16 by 9. So your TV, right? Or the when you choose the aspect ratio of 16 by 9 in your TV, that's what it's saying. It's making a box like that that you can see. All right, so that's the aspect ratio. Um, which means that for every 16 inches of width, the TV is nine inches high. It's kind of like I've drawn there. What is the height of a, or what is the height of a TV that is 40 inches wide? So it's still gonna follow that same ratio, but we're saying instead of 16, it's gonna grow to 40. So now what's our side length gonna be? So now let's set this up. So we're gonna have, what I would do first is just write down what you know. So 16 by nine, we're just gonna rewrite that, but we're gonna write it as a uh, fraction. So. I'm just going to kind of do on the side here what they've done here, but explain what I'm doing. So let's go 16 over 9. So that's step number one. Just rewrote that. Now it says um, the TV is 9 inches high. So now I'm going to go equals. And now really the question is, the only place you can kind of get this backwards is, will the 9 go on top or will the unknown go on, on the top? Like which one Like do we, do we do here? So let's just think about it for a second. It just needs to be the same as the one on this side. So talking about either width, like it's either going to be width on the top, like on both, or um, height on the top on both. So let's just say, so it says for every 16 inches of width, the TV is 9 inches high. So it looks like our equation is set up where width is on top and our height is on the bottom. So let's just keep that the same over here. It says that the height of the TV is 40 inches wide. So I'm going to put 40 on the top and then X on the bottom. Notice that it doesn't matter like uh, what side the 16 over 9 is or which side the 40 over X is. Uh, it, it doesn't matter which way you write it. Like I wrote it different than the way in the textbook there. Um, but it's going to end up with the same answer. Okay, so now that you've set that up, what we're going to do is cross multiply. So maybe you remember cross multiplying, maybe you don't. Um, don't worry if you don't. So all we're gonna do if I wanna find X here, because that's what we want, right? We gotta figure out what the unknown value there is. What we're gonna do is you start off with the other one, so 40 here, and we're gonna go 40 times nine, and then divided by 16. So if I can put like a little divided by your division symbol in there. So divided by 16, and then that gives you X. So you can kind of see that pattern there, right? It goes 40 times 9 divided by 16 gives you X. Hopefully that made sense. Um, one way of thinking about that, this is kind of called uh, like fish method, cross multiplying or, or fish. And the reason for it is because if you started off with that 40, you'd kind of draw like a fish shape kind of like I have there, right? So hopefully that made sense. So that's going to be the quick method of doing that. But one thing I'd like to show you is what's really happening there, like why that works. Um, so let's start again with our 16 over 9. Um, make that equal to 40 over x. What we really want to do is we want to solve for x, right? We want x on its own. So what, what I'm going to do is I don't like X being in the denominator here first. Like I don't like it being in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I want to try to get it to the top. And the way I can do that is if I multiply this side of the equation by X and this side of the equation by X, right? Like multiply both sides of the equation by X and put a little dot there to say like multiply. Um, then what happens is you've got X over X on the right side here. So those would cancel or they'd end up equaling one, right? X divided by X is one. And then on the left side here, I've got, now I have X, right? So X times 16 over nine. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of this stuff. So what I'm going to do, you can pick either one first. I'll pick the nine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by nine. So I'll go times nine 
and those cancel on this side times 9 on this side. So now what I'd be left with is x times 16 is equal to 40 times 9. Okay, hopefully you're following me. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just divide by 16 on both sides. Because I've got 16 divided by 16, that's 1. 40 times 9 divided by 16. So that would be my answer, right? So now you can see, remember, so go back up to where we did our cross multiplying method or our fish method. Um, remember, so the red line here, we went 40 times 9 divided by 16 gives you x. Well, that's exactly what we ended up finding here. We go 40 times 9 divided by 16. So this is truly what's happening, but this is kind of a little bit of a shortcut. So however you, you like to do it, I'm okay with it now. I just wanted to kind of make sure you understood like where that comes from and why it works. Okay, so I'm going to help you out with this first one to help you get it set up, and then I'm going to let you go and do the rest of them. So let's go, let's do number four. So it says a dirt bike requires 15 liters of gas to be mixed with four liters of oil. If you use 20 liters of gas, how much oil would you need? So, so let's just start here. We've got 15 and we got four. That's our first ratio. So let's just write that down. 15 over four. It's going to be equal to a different ratio. Now let's just make sure we know which one's on the top and which on the bottom. So it says a dirt bike requires 15 liters of gas. So apparently gas is going on the top, oil is going on the bottom. So the last part says if you use 20 liters of gas, okay, so 20 has got to go on the top. It's 20 liters of gas. How much oil will you need? So we're looking for the bottom. So now this is going to be very much like what we did up here. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and do that. Um, and then go, at, uh, go on and do the other ones as well. I guess before you do, I just want to make sure that what, what would you do, let's say, if you had, and I'm just going to make one up here. Let's go, let's go 2 over 5 is equal to x over um, 15. Let's say something like that, right? What would you do there? How would you solve for x? Well, it's going to be really, really similar to the other one, but you're going to start with the 15. So you're going to go 15 times 2 and then divided by 5. And then that would give you x. So it's the same. It's, it's a really similar pattern. It's just the other way. So that's the other one that might come up too. So I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up on that one. So one thing I'd, li I'd like you guys to do, though, when you're, when you're looking through these, though, can you pause it and do these questions? Don't just keep following along with the video and then go back to them. I kind of like it fresh in your mind. So if you haven't done questions one, two, and three yet, too, go back and do those. And, and just make sure that you're kind of doing these and then pressing play and carrying on. Okay, so now we are going to be moving on to something called slope. So now that we know these ratios, we can start talking about something called slope, too. So maybe you've heard the words uh, pitch, uh, not like singing. It's going to be pitch more like, you know, how, how slanted something is. So pitch, slant, or steepness. What do they mean? Well, they're really talking about slope, like how, slope is, how sloped is something. So that, is that more sloped than, than that, which is more or like, you know, which, is that less or more sloped than that? So we're going to be able to start giving these numbers now, like actually putting some kind of value to that. So here is going to be our formula for slope. Slope is going to be equal to vertical distance over horizontal distance. And you've probably maybe never seen this symbol before. This is uh, the Greek symbol um, delta, and it means change. So change or difference. So what that means is that, so change in distance would be, so if I had a slope, something like that, right? The change in distance is going to be what's the difference between there to there, right? And what's the difference between there to there? So this is going to be what we're going to call a rise on this side. And the bottom here is going to be called a run. Maybe I'll just kind of draw this in there too. So we're going to have really triangles, right? We're going to have a triangle where we're going to have a rise part of it, like how much it goes up and down, and we're going to have a run part of it, how much it goes um, left and right. So that's kind of the main idea here. 
So this first example says, calculate the slope of a line that has a rise of 12 and a run of eight. So um, rise over run. So slope is equal to rise over run. Or another way of writing slope, they just got lazy and said, let's figure out the symbol for this. It's gonna be M is equal to rise over run. All right, so now we just gotta plug our numbers in. So we're gonna say M is equal to <clears throat> well, the rise, it just told us right there, is 12. The run is 8. And now we just need to make sure that we put this as simple as we can. 12 over 8, I can simplify that fraction. And I can simplify that because I know 4 goes into 12 and 8. So I can go divided by 4, divided by 4. <coughs> so this is the same as 3 over 2. So that that's what you would say the slope of this roof or something like that is. So the slope can also be expressed as a decimal, though. So like we said in the last one, it could have been written as 3 over 2. Um, if you actually go in your calculator and you go 3 over 2, 3, oh, when we say over, that's the same thing as saying 3 divided by 2 as well. You get 1.5. So you can write it as a decimal, too. So 1.5. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys go ahead and do the slope calculations for... Um, seven, so seven A, B, C, D, and E. All right, so now we're gonna do the same type of thing, but we're gonna make one slope equal to another slope, right? Because a, a slope is just a ratio, it's a rise over a run. So we're doing proportions again. We're gonna have, uh, yeah, so we're gonna, it's gonna be really similar to the one we did right before um, this last one. So it says the slope of a line is seven over 20. What is the rise if the run is a hundred meters? So let's just write down, so slope is equal to rise over run, right? So now let's write down this ratio, this slope. We're gonna write down as seven over 20. Okay, so seven over 20. Um, and now that's gonna be equal to what it actually is. So just make sure that you put a hundred in the right spot. Like is it gonna go on the top? Is it gonna go on the bottom? So it says, what is the rise if the run is 100? Run goes on the bottom in this, this um, ratio. So we're going to put 100 on the bottom and put X up here. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go 100 times 7 divided by 20. That's going to give me X is equal to 35. And then don't forget to put your units at the end. So 35 meters. Technically, you should be putting your units in as you're doing your calculations. I can probably let you guys get away with being lazy here, though, too, as long as you write your units in your final answer. All right. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and do these ones on your own as well. And I'm actually not going to go through this one. It's actually really similar to the ones you just did as well, too. So take a look through this, see what they did. But I think if you got the last ones, you should be okay on that one, too. Okay, so the rest of this is going to be on you guys to do. So we got these this assignment now. Um, yes, yeah, so we can go ahead and do all of the rest of them um, up until 1.2. Don't start 1.2 yet. That's going to be in the next video. So just the end of 1.1. Um, and then before you move on to 1.2, this needs to be done and it needs to be checked. And then your teacher can... Um, let you see the key for that too. So they'll unlock that card for that key. So you can see that and check your answers. Uh, depending on what your, how your teacher does it, um, you might need to do all your corrections before you can move on as well. So I'm going to end that video there.